Now at 11, a bizarre end in the search for an escaped and dangerous attempted murder suspect on the run in Portland. Also corruption from within and the police chief accused of stealing and tampering with evidence. And Friday Night Football returns with a new season and new ambitions for our local high school football teams. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Tim Gordon, in for David. We begin with crooks caught in the act at a Gresham food cart pod. And it's not just what they stole, it's what they did with it that led one owner to lose more than a thousand bucks. Catherine Cook shows us how. Just trying to make a living, yeah. Krista Larson owns the crazy coconut food cart in Gresham. It's been a tough year for her. Three break-ins since January. The third happened early Thursday morning. I noticed a ton of notifications on my phone. It was like motion detected, motion detected. I was like, oh no, uh, and I already knew. Here's what security cameras captured. Krista says this guy pried open the till, stole cash and her work phone. The whole morning was just kind of like a blur overall. I was just so irritated and frustrated. Then things got a lot worse for Krista. I had all these transfer notifications from like my PayPal and my Venmo and I was like, oh no, you gotta be kidding me. She says the crook used her phone to transfer a thousand dollars to himself. It was intense. I was scared. I was like, oh my God, what, what did I do? A couple hours earlier, it appears the same guy plus a woman broke into a different food cart at the same pod, bubble tea and brews. At one point, the woman grabs a plastic cup and tries to help herself to a beer, only to get splattered in the face. Later, the pair break open the till, steal cash, and three computer tablets. So my online orders haven't been able to come through. For owner Mike Robinson, <laughs> it was a gut punch. Violated because I was still on site working when they came into my cart. Mike, who also owns the food cart pod, had been helping repair a different cart while his was unlocked. It seemed like they were watching me work in and out of the cart coming and going and they timed it just right to where I wasn't able to see them. I have no choice but to just take it on the chin. There's no insurance that'll help. Same goes for Krista. Being hit three times in a year, my insurance will drop me. For both businesses, frustrating barely covers it. You know, especially for criminals to like target small businesses, like we got enough on our plates. We don't need any more problems. Hmm. And since you might be wondering, the answer is yes. The crook did use his name when transferring himself the money. Krista shared that information with police and her friend started a GoFundMe account to help Krista recover some of her losses. You'll find that link on KGW.com. If you recognize either of the two suspects in the video, call Gresham Police. Tim, back to you. All right, Catherine, thanks a lot. Good to have a name at least. Yeah. All right, let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. An escaped attempted murder suspect is back in custody after he was found stuck in a Portland pond. Firefighters rescued 39-year-old Christopher Lee Prey this morning in North Portland. He said he'd been trapped in the pond for 12 hours with mud up to his neck. Police say he escaped from the Oregon State Hospital on Wednesday night and stole a vehicle. Prey was medically evaluated after his rescue and then taken back into custody. Well, the strike continues for teachers in the Camas and Evergreen school districts. However, there's a sense of optimism heading into the holiday weekend that if both sides come to the table and then a deal might be able to be reached. Teachers in both districts are fighting for smaller class sizes, more money, more planning time, and support for students with special needs. Bargaining is still underway. And those aren't the only strike issues in the area. More than 3,000 nurses at OHSU may strike as well. They'll vote next week on whether to authorize a strike. The Oregon Nurses Association says it has been negotiating with OHSU for the past nine months without coming to an agreement on a contract. Voting begins next Wednesday, September 6th, and runs on until the 17th. Well, a police chief on the Oregon coast is in some hot water tonight. Tillamook Chief Raymond Rao is facing four misdemeanor charges. Court documents allege he stole and tampered with evidence at the police station. This is Tillamook Police Chief Raymond Rao in charge of the department since July of 2021, an officer with nearly 30 years of experience now under fire. That's because he is facing four misdemeanor charges in a missing and tampered evidence case. 
Court documents filed Wednesday say Rao took drugs and money from the evidence lockers. The charge in count one is official misconduct in the first degree, claiming Rao knowingly did remove controlled substances from the Tillamook police evidence locker with intent to obtain a benefit. Count two alleges Rao of theft, alleging he took cash with a total value of $100 or more. The other two counts also allege theft of drugs and money. The court paperwork says the offenses occurred between October 1st of 2021 and May 8th of 2023. The Tillamook Herald leader broke the story and says Oregon State Police began an investigation in May after an audit of the police department's property room revealed that evidence had been tampered or removed in more than 80 cases dating back to 2005, with the vast majority of those occurring since 2021. We reached out to OSP and the State Department of Justice, but got nothing of substance back. The Tillamook County District Attorney wrote to us, saying in part, I assigned DOJ to handle the investigation and prosecution of this case due to it being a conflict for my office. I have only received the initial audit report for purposes of evaluating the effect of the audit on cases my office is or has prosecuted. Police Chief Rao has reportedly been on administrative leave since May. More to come on that story. Well, there's a sewage advisor tonight at a part of southwest Portland. City officials say sewage overflowed from a maintenance hole this morning and with some of it reaching a creek in Markham Nature Park. This is near southwest Sherwood Place in Fairmont Boulevard. People and their pets are advised to avoid contact with the creek due to the potential exposure to elevated bacteria levels. The advisory is in effect for 48 hours. This is the third sewage release at a public place in the past week, which the Environmental Services Bureau calls unusual. And turning now to our homeless crisis, it's been just over a month since Portland's first large sanctioned campsite opened in Southeast off of Powell Boulevard. It can hold about 200 people and at last check, 80 had moved in. Prior to opening, the city made an agreement with the surrounding neighborhood associations and part of that agreement was that there would be no camping within a thousand feet of the site. But when we checked this week, well, we found camps already popping up well within that zone. Many are along train tracks that run right next to the site. It's kind of stupid to me because if they wanted to get more homeless up off the streets, you would think that they would maybe reverse that law or that rule and, and have it where you would want to set up your tent within a thousand feet of them so they could know that where you are and get you on a list or something, you know, in, instead of the reverse of that, you know. The city says, well, I can't touch it. It's railroad yeah. property. And the railroad property says, well, I don't have the resources to do anything about it. So, okay, so now what do we do? Now the mayor's office says the city is working with railroad leaders to find a quick solution. All right, still ahead, cheers to the land and keeping Oregon in the hands of Oregonians. How a new effort is trying to protect local farmland from opportunistic developers. And the live look over downtown Portland right now, yeah, it's dark. It's 71 degrees, though. You couldn't tell that until you saw this, right? Also, check this out. A sneak peek at your Saturday forecast. We will be warmer tomorrow. We also have a chance of storms. I'll walk you through that coming up after the break.